She is a very great blessed mother. To us, she means a lot for the miracles and that she has performed for us. We have asked her big favors and she has granted those miracles to us. The altar means uh, years and years of uh, culture, tradition to the uh, barrio, to the neighborhood. It, uh, it stands uh, for uh, a lot of people have a lot of faith in Our Lady Guadalupe. She has come through with uh, miracles. Um, my grandmother went through a, a severe operation back in January. She broke her hip. And she's 92, and she pulled through that beautifully. And I think basically because we all have a lot of faith in Our Lady. So it's a spiritual thing. times when I've tried to find strength in raising kids by myself, when I'm at church or when I'm not at church, I think of her. If I say a prayer I, when I'm going through hard times, especially with my kids, I think of her and I ask her to help me, and give me the strength that she saw her way through with. Yeah, she helps me a lot, spiritually. Well, that's uh, faith of the people. This altar is, uh, uh, they put a lot of expenses in this altar, like uh, they come out of their pocket, you know, the money. But uh, it's uh, just the faith they got through the Blessed Virgin Mary. Is 1531, and it's uh, outside of what is today is known as Mexico City. And Juan Diego, who is an Aztec Indian, is on his way to Mass in the city. It's a long trip. And uh, as he's walking along on the road, he hears music. He hears birds singing. And all of a sudden, when he looks around, he sees light coming from everywhere. And as he walks towards the light, he hears a woman call his name, and she tells him to approach and to come closer. Know and understand, you the dearest of my children, that I am the ever-holy Virgin Mary, mother of the true God of whom we all live. I have a living desire that a temple be built to me. In it I can give forth all my love and remedy misery, pains, and sufferings. Go to the palace of the bishop and tell him that on this site below this hill, a temple be built to me. My lady, I'm already on my way to Dear Mandel. Thank you very much for the visit, Juan Diego. I'm terribly sorry I had to wait so long, but you must understand, the work of God is very exhausting and doesn't always permit a quick response to every request. I really would like to hear your story again until the end, but please come back, vuelve. I gave him your message just as you had told me. He did not believe as true what I told him. I beg you to entrust your mission to one of the important persons who is well known, respected, and esteemed so that they may believe him. And um, she comforts him again and uh, tells him that uh, he is beloved to her and uh, that he has to go back again, that she is sending him on a mission and that she really wants the church built. So he goes back again, and he gets in again after long waiting, and uh, this time the bishop listens a little more closely 
but he's still not too sure of the man's story. It could be something he made up, and so he says he wants a sign from the, from the lady. The story of your sounds fantastic, and I hope you realize the seriousness of my time. But it's true. I really did see her, and I'm not making it up. Where did you see her? On the hill of Tapia. Tapia. What, did, Tapia. what did she look like? Her dress radiated like the sun, and her face had an expression of love and compassion. I don't know if I can believe you. The word of an Indian is not enough for me. I need some sign to prove that what you are saying is really true. Tell me the sign you are asking for so that I may go ask her for it. Never mind. That'll be all. Thank you. And when Juan Diego goes back home, he finds that his uncle uh, is very sick, Bernardino. And he knows he's supposed to meet the lady the next morning, but he needs to go and get a doctor for his uncle. So he takes a different route to avoid the lady, and she surprises him on the road. And she uh, comforts him and says that she will take care of his uncle, and uh, that he will be healed, and that everything will be all right. And he, then he t she tells him to go to a certain spot where he will find flowers, roses, in the midst of the dead of winter. And he does. He goes off to where he is told to go, and he finds roses blooming. And he brings back the roses, and the lady arranges the roses in his tilma, his cloak, and sends him back to the bishop. Juan, come here. Show me. There is a sign and proof you asked for. Now her will may be fulfilled. Roses. When the roses dropped from the Toma, everyone saw the image of Mary, the mother of God. The same Toma is in the temple built in her honor on Tepeyek called Guadalupe. And so when the woman appears to them, she appears as an Indian. She is dark. She's called La Morenita. She is an Aztec Indian girl, and she speaks in their language. It's as though she's saying to Juan Diego and to the bishop and to the Spaniards and to history, I'm an Indian. I have taken sides with the conquered people, with the weak and the poor, and you will meet me on the road outside the cities where there is no power where people struggle with death and despair and sickness and being conquered. Uh, and the miracle is that she is one of the dispossessed. She's one of the conquered, and yet she will ask the bishop of the conquering nation to build her a shrine and a, a church on a specific piece of land that she points out. So the, the real miracle is that the poor and the conquered have the the power of the God and his mother of the conquering people. It's like she says, I'm on your side, but I'm also on their side. Lupita. Lupita. itself in the Indian way of perceiving reality is like an icon. An icon is a, a representation of reality that is supposed to be like a doorway that you can walk out of one world and into another. She has the sun behind her and she has the moon at her feet and for the Aztec gods who were the gods of the sky who were the most powerful it says that she even is more powerful than they are. She has a black band or above her waist. And that was the Indian's way of announcing to the community that a woman was pregnant. And so Mary is announcing to the Indian people that she is bringing Jesus, the one who will save his people, to them. And because she is an Indian, an Aztec, and very young, maybe 14 or 15 years old, she is bringing the Savior that is one of them to them.
Southwest and Texas and in Mexico, she has come to symbolize what happens when the Anglos and the Hispanics come together, that somehow a new people has to be born out of the two cultures, the two races, the two languages, the two ways of perceiving reality, matriarchy and patriarchy, and that if the Americas is going to be whole and live in harmony and peace, then she will be a bridge that pulls them together. She'll be the symbol of what they might be able to become. Well, I'm very, very happy for their celebrating the Our Lady Guadalupe fiesta. To me, it's more interesting than Christmas. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful fiesta every year. I've been involved with this for about 30 years. As a president, I've been 20 years with this, and since I was seven years old, now I'm 63 years old, so <laughs> just figure that. <laughs> Being 60 years of tradition uh, means a lot to our family and to the uh, neighborhood. I started uh, working with the city back in 78, 1978. Prior to that, I couldn't, uh, had a hard time finding a job. And I thought, there's something wrong. It's either me or, and I said, uh, my lady, I'm having a hard time finding a job. And uh, would you help me? Uh, shortly after that, in 1979, I started working with the city. They called me, and, and, I, and I think she had a lot to do with that. To this day, I, I owe her that favor. the Virgin Mother of the Americas. She was named the Blessed Mother of the Americas because I have a little, um, a little stamp that was sent to me from San Antonio and it says there in Spanish to ask her, she says, ask me, ask me, do not give up for I am here to help you. I am your Blessed Mother and I am here to help you in all your troubles and sicknesses. And we ask her, we ask her. Sometimes we cry it out within our hearts, whatever, however the problem comes along, however hard it is, we ask her. And, and then apparently sooner or later it is granted. A lot of the cultural traditions that uh, the people used to celebrate Our Lady of Guadalupe go back to the story. Um, Juan Diego is on his way to Mass. He is traveling on the roads, he's a poor man, uh, and Our Lady meets him on the way to the church. And so when people gather today on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, they go on the road. 
they go on the way because she they do things for her in church because that they build her places where they can um, be devoted to her. But the real understanding is that you always meet Our Lady of Guadalupe on the way to wherever you're going, on the outskirts of the city, on the way to church. <laughs> And the tradition goes even deeper that um, often they will say in places in uh, South Texas and um, um, Southern California and uh, Southern New Mexico that if you get too rich and too powerful and you get too settled in the city and in the culture that is the dominant culture, then you'll miss her because you don't find her in the cities, you find her in the barrios, you find her in the neighborhoods, you find her in the homes of the poor, you find her on the way and on the road, and um, that she belongs especially to those kinds of people, uh, and that her special love is for the poor. And so the processions are very, very important. It's, um, it's a way of reenacting and uh, the story again, and when they get to the altar, uh, it's like getting to the cathedral, since they, you know, can't go there, many of them. So they have their own cathedral, they have their own church, their own temple in her honor that is new. It's a new creation. It's beautiful. It's uh, different than their everyday life. They pour all of their devotion into this one place um, that's really in their hearts, but it's an outward sign that she rules not only their hearts, but their homes, and their neighborhoods, and their churches, and their whole lives. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros los pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Santa María de Guadalupe. Bendito seas, Señor Dios, el universo por este pan, fruto de la tierra del trabajo del hombre, que recibimos de tu generosidad y ahora te presentamos. Él será para nosotros pan de vida. Bendito seas por siempre, Señor. All 
the traditions that surround Our Lady of Guadalupe, whether it's the processions and the altars and the roses and Las Mañanitas early in the morning, the saying of the rosary, the singing of the songs, they all focus on one thing, and that's the Mass, the liturgy. Um, again, it goes back to the story. Juan Diego is on his way to Mass when he meets the Lady. And um, Mary is important as the mother of the Redeemer, the mother of the child who comes to save, the mother of the Son of Justice. Um, but everything that she does points to her child. Uh, everything she does for us is supposed to lead us to Jesus. And so the focal point for all the devotions is liturgy, is this high mass in honor of Our Lady of Guadalupe, because Mary lives to serve her child and to take care of all of her children on earth. And if we are good children of our mother, then we live to take care of the poor of the earth and her children the way she did and the way her child did. And that's the story and the ritual that is told and acted out in mass. Este es Cristo, el Cordero de Dios que quita los pecados del mundo. Dichosos nosotros los invitados a esta cena.
For a video cassette copy of this Colores program, send $29.95 plus $3 for shipping and handling to KNME TV, 1130 University Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87102, or call 1 800 328 5663.